Welcome, lacrosse friends. We are underway in Arena Lacrosse League action here at Millbrook Arena, the Peterborough Timberman. The home club come away with the first possession. Off the opening draw, Sam Trumbull with the ball, and they will push forward, and he's going to just drive through the check of an Asweekin Bear as the Bears and Timberman get going. There's the first shot. That one's a little bit wide of Sam Forbes, who's between the pipes, and the first penalty of the game coming early, hanging on to the ball, maintaining possession there. Nice work by Kent Baker Printup. Took the hit, hang, hung on to the ball, and it's going to be... You see whether that's a minor or a major. Sounded like it might be. It might have said five. It's a boarding call. The ref signaled it away from us, so we'll. Oh, charging. So 37 seconds in, a sweep and goes to their first power play. It'll be run from the top by Dan Kritkowski. Kritkowski, primarily a D transition player, but showed some pretty good hands. Plays a lot of Can-Am ball in the summer. It is a two-minute minor. So the Bears going to this first power play. They are in eighth place. They will be in eighth place. The first shot stopped there by Ethan Woods making the stop. He is backed up today by Wyatt King. Peter did have Thomas Kaizek as one of their goaltenders for a bunch of games this year. He is now active with the Saskatchewan Rush. He'd been on the practice squad, but they've moved him up to active. Moved Lane Rushka, another Arena League veteran, is on the practice squad now behind Frank Chiliano there. Patient, patient power play. Now the shot from the outside ripped there by Kritkowski. No problem for Woods. Casey Swamp is there for the outlet. They're going to go up to center, though. It gets away. The pass was a bit too much for Jared Downey. And Oswekin will go back to the power play set up with a minute 12 left in their man advantage. Kritkowski at the top, hands it off there to Baker Printup. He's at the shooter spot up top to Kritkowski. Rip from the outside. That was Lucas Beaver. Beaver, the leading scorer available today for the Bears. He's got 12 goals and 19 assists. Caleb Bingley running the floor, had a thought about going to the net, got turned aside by some nice hustle by the Bears. And the Timberman set up on the penalty kill, Riley Curtis with it. 35 left on the penalty. Shot clock is down to eight. That pass doesn't connect. Curtis was looking to go set a pick. It's tracked down by Dylan Goddard. He's got two seconds to get a shot off. He's just gonna see the clock expiring, put it down, and a Sweekin will have 22 seconds to work with on their man advantage. Run up by Anthony D'Amico. He stays in plays after handing it off. Gets it back immediately there from Heron Snow. Looked at Snow. Little duck inside. Eddie Renault going to the crease. Stepped in the crease. And he'll have to go back and that'll do it for the penalty. Just six seconds left on the first man advantage. It's a little spicy for Schultzke though. Nate Schultzke couldn't quite get it. Battle at center. It's going to be an eight-second count on the Timberman, and Oswekin will get it back. There's one second left in the power play, so it is over. Corkery is released. And Lucas Beaver has it along the far boards. Beaver's pass momentarily handcuffed. Heron Snow, he goes down by the, by the goal line. Schultzke out on him. Yep. Schultzke fights through a pick. It's a nice two, three-man defense by the Timberman. Parker Sands knocks a stick right out of a Bears' hands. And Timmerman come back the other way three minutes into this first quarter. Jacob Gasparetti, huge season for him so far. 25 goals, leading the team in goals, and he plays defense. Wow, transition. That pass is whipped over into the Oswekin bench, and the Bears will come back the other way. A little floor check pressure from Frederick Hartley. Forced a bit of nimbleness from one of the call-up players. Oh, that was Karen Costello bringing the ball up. I scratched through the wrong name here. Bingley makes it back up across center. And they're slowing things down. Start to go to the net. Long pass across the floor on this side to Curtis, who goes down low. Goddard surveying back to Curtis, but it got into his body. Manages to pick it up, but it's knocked loose again under some pressure there from DeWitt Martin. 
Forbes takes his time, makes the outlet pass. Long pass this time up to Beaver. Didn't see anybody he liked in close, so he just tosses it back up, and Baker print up, and Krikowski will get things rolling. Bjorn Dielman with the ball, one of the call ups for the short staffed Bears. Comes out to Dielman. He's going to try and run through a double team, but it's knocked loose by Parker Sands. Grab there, and here we go for a run. Sam Trumbull. Trumbull, one of the many Ottawa natives playing at high levels of the game. That shot didn't get through. I think it was blocked. And it's going to be an outlet pass, but it gets away up near center from Dowett Martin. And Frederick Hartley has it. Backpedaling along the boards. Curtis gives it back to him. Some harass of players in the middle of the floor. It's knocked down, taking off his hair and snow. Three Peterborough players get back. He crosses the floor and comes to the near boards for us. And we'll slow it down, headed out to Renault. Renault, the top point getter for the Bears at this point with 29. He's got 13 goals, 16 assists. That's among the players here today. Another save by Woods. And the Timberman pushed it up over center. Riley Curtis had gone back to play D. The lane opens. He shoots far side. And Forbes just crouches back on his haunches to make sure he had that ball after he made the save. It kind of dropped behind him. He had it. And here's Krikowski running up over center. Krikowski runs off the pick there from Dealman. Far side of the floor. Eddie Renault tucks it. Gets a shot off, but it's blocked by Casey Swamp. Swamp all over him. Flicks behind the back, and it rolls up. Actually rolls onto the, lay, the level of boarding up above the net. Out of play, and it is Peterborough Ball. Trumbull thought about leaving him for Goddard. Almost stepped over center as he waited for Jared Downey to be available for a pass. Corker comes down the middle late, and... Sets a bit of a pick, they go to the far side. Now comes back to Goddard, he's got a lane, shoots, gets it through, but goes off the inside of the foot of Forbes and off into the corner. Forbes reaches out and pulls it in, makes the pass ahead, but not able to be controlled by Kane Kettle. Now Kettle's gonna try and get on Gasparetti, but Gasparetti, those quick strides, he's got such great acceleration. Hits the cutter in the back door, but it didn't quite connect with Koichi Nakamura. He went into the crease and it's Bears possession. Scoreless through six and a half minutes here. I'm Stephen Stamp, pleased to be with you for this Arena Lacrosse League action. Bears into the offensive zone. Zachary Moen, 67, had it. He's up at the top now, waiting for a return pass. As Lucas Beaver fights his way through the checking of Schultzke and gets a shot off, but Woods had no trouble with that. He is going to have to get it ahead, and he throws a long outlet pass. That's too high. It's going to go right to the other end, taking off the backboards, and the Bears come back. As Anthony D'Amico ran ahead with it. A little lefty shot on the run. On the far side, stopped again by Woods. After having his shot stopped, some real pressure from Kane Kettle on the forecheck, but the Timberman make it up into the offensive zone. Curtis takes it up at the top. The last couple of Timberman defenders will head in for a change. 15 seconds to shoot. Hartley stopped. Tried to go five hole, scooped up there by Forbes. Shot clock to our right, not operating at this point. So we're having to check to the left, which is tricky for Peterborough this quarter. As they're looking at the net, don't see the shot clock. They've got to have somebody look the other way for them. Most we can, can see Eddie Renault sees there's 12, passes it off. Krikowski, there's going to be a penalty to a Sweeken. It's an illegal cross check. And that will be Lucas Beaver on the overzealous pick. And the Timberman will get their first power play of the game. Looks like they're going strong left with Curtis Goddard and Hartley out there. The righties will be Jared Downey and Aaron Bradshaw. The only, only two righties, righty forwards, regular righty forwards that they have today. Goddard takes it to the shooter spot, up to Curtis at the top. Downey gets it back from Bradshaw up to Curtis. Flips behind the back, lane opens, down he cuts to the net. Nice pass by Goddard, but the turn it's turned aside by Forbes, who's been sharp. Bradshaw circles the net, heads back over to his side. 
Curtis seriously thought about shooting it. Gets it back now quickly to Goddard who rips one. Nice movement side to side by Forbes. Makes the first stop at the rebound. Tucked home and we have the first goal of the game. It's a power play marker for the Timberman. Much to the delight of the crowd here at the Millbrook Community Center. Millbrook Arena. As mentioned, Oswegan will be eighth today, eighth this season, as they're sitting in eighth, can't catch anyone. They're two and 11, winless on the road. They did get a couple of wins at home. The Timberman sitting in sixth right now at five and eight. Just one and five at home. They've actually been quite successful on the road at four and three. A win today and they will finish sixth. Or if Six Nations loses tomorrow, and we're going to take our half first, our break at the middle of the first quarter. We'll be back with more ALL action from Millbrook. All right, lacrosse friends, we are ready to roll once again. Eddie Renault will start with the ball, watched closely by Nathan Schultzke, and that pass is a little off. Lucas Beaver manages to manages to corral it. Bingley is all over him, and Beaver goes to the turf. Kettle got a chance. He's rammed into the backboard. That's going to be a penalty. After finishing that check, Peter is going to go shorthanded. I believe that will go to, to Bingley. Hard rip from the outside. It's a bouncer taken by D'Amico. It missed. Just three seconds left on the shot clock. Beaver's going to let it rip. He looked around for passes, realized there was no time. Let it fly. And it's going to be a boarding call on Bingley. Believe it's a minor. Yes. So with 6.39 to go, Oswegan trails by a goal. Here's their chance to even things up. Krakowski's at the top again. He takes that pass from Renault as they go strong right. Krakowski over to Renault. He's going to let it fly. Woods swallows that one up. Shot right along the turf. Woods had no trouble with it. Again, though, the pass is too much. Flies over the head of Jared Downey and is turned over immediately. Here's Heron Snow. Backpedaling down towards the corner and drops it for Krikowski. Kettle back to Renault at the lefty shooter spot. Krikowski gets an up pick, but just rips one well wide. It gets up and almost came up into here. Hit the netting, Nesh, the netting a little in front of us. Gasparini gives it to Hartley, and Peterborough goes to the penalty kill. No pressure, so Hartley's just walking around the top of the zone. Spin back the other way as Heron Snow comes out on him. Gets to Curtis. Lane opens up. Shot clock is working to the right, which is going to help Peterborough. They're down to seven, six to shoot. Bradshaw, four check pressure, but the nice pass out. And it's cleared there by Zachary Moen. Gets it ahead to Heron Snow. We've got tons of time left. 50 seconds still on the power play. Renault, nobody coming to him, but he likes to go back up to Krikowski. Snow to Krikowski, and he's going to fire one. Another save by Woods. Justin Bragg almost had that one. Goes out to Snow instead. They've got a fresh 30, and they've got over 30 on the penalty. Still 1-0, approaching five minutes to go here in the first. Wayward behind the back pass, but it is corralled. Eventually comes over to Snow. That pass was picked off, and... On the run is Parker Sands. Tried to drift one top corner. Just missed though. Gets up out of play and it'll be a sweep in possession. They have 10 seconds on the power play. Doubt they're gonna try anything, we'll see. Yeah, they're just gonna wait. Let Bingley get released and back into the play to avoid any chance of a breakaway on a missed shot. Nice stop by Woods. Didn't know where the rebound was, but then he eventually identified it Pounced out on it just outside his crease. Makes the outlet pass to Bingley. He's got Gasparetti with him. It's a pretty good pass. Nice catch. Gasparetti comes out top and scores. Goes five wall for him. Might have thought he had it, but Gasparetti, goal number 26 on the season. Again, running from the D transition spot. Nice pass there from Bingley just out of the penalty box. And the Timberman pull ahead 2 nothing with 4.22 to play here in the first quarter. Kuishi Nakamura at the dot for the faceoff up against Anthony D'Amico. Extended battle. Nakamura 
Tried to pull it out, but D'Amico wound up with it. Flipped by Dawit Martin behind the back. He gets it ahead. Now gets the return pass from Beaver. Schultzkin, very lively game today for him on defense for the Timberman. There's Renault with the pass to the near side and setting up his Kate, Kate Kent Baker print up. Schultzke on him. The slide help comes from Owen Dale. And the Timberman are going the other way. It's Trumbull onto his offside, pulls up. He'll just hand it off, let the O set up with 344 to play in the first. Riley Curtis, pick coming for him. That's a big pick from Colt McNutt. Didn't lead to anything. Colton McNutt, sorry. It's going to be Kane Kettle getting it. Goddard, nice job being back on transition defense. Underhand shot ripped by Bjorn Dielman. Woods goes for the slightly shorter pass, just his own side of center, and gets that through to Corkery. Bulls his way through the check, and they set up in the offensive zone. Right on top of the crease, Goddard spinning. It's off the foot of Forbes. Goes all the way back to the Peterborough restraining line. Riley Curtis tracked it down, now he picks it up. And now he picks it up, actually just was tapping it ahead to save some precious seconds on the 30 second clock. They won't need many as Curtis with the give and go with Goddard gets a backdoor pass, but is stopped by Forbes. Still two nothing, less than three to go in the first. Heron Snow trying to get under Parker Sands. It's a good recovery by Sands defensively. Snow with the diving tuck shot. Doesn't get it in before he lands in the crease. Actually, I think Woods caught it anyway. Gasparetti had Schultzke ahead, and he's saying, oh, I got it. Just go, go for your change. Gasparetti gliding up the floor. He's so quick. Former Ottawa GG standout. Big slide there and a solid hit from Moen. Piro comes to the near boards. Off to the far side. Bradshaw's shot goes off in a sweeping and player, so it'll be a fresh 30. Timmerman will try to add to this two to nothing lead. 2.22 to go in the first. Again, a win today would clinch sixth for the Timberman. And they would play the third place team, which will be either the Oshawa Outlaws or Brampton Express. Depends on Oshawa's game tonight. If Oshawa beats Toronto, they get second. If they lose, they'll come third. And Brampton would move up into second. Either way, Paris is finishing fourth, and the Toronto Monarchs are fifth. Those two will meet in the first round of the playoffs next weekend. Quarterfinals, four games next week. One versus eight, two versus seven, three, six, and four, five. Big hit there from Bingley. Ball bounces loose on an attempted behind the back pass. S scooped up by Beaver. They're down to five seconds on the shot clock. It's solid defensive pressure. And by Frederick Hartley playing a D shift. Now he's going length of the floor. Oh, great move, great hustle, but then he lost, lost control of the ball as he was running into the crease. He just popped away from him. And it's a crease violation. Bears come back the other way. Schultzke again, way up high. Pressure out near center. Pretty small rink, so you're able to really get out and force the issue. Cutting through that shot gets a little wide from Dawit Martin. Scooped back up, nice behind the back pass on the two-man game. Oh, what a shot. Ripping it around his defender, Kate Bank Kent Baker print up his seventh goal of the season. With a shot just around the legs of the Peterborough defender. And it's a two to one game with 106 to play. Nakamura and Tomiko once again. They're very even on the clamp. They both get down on the ball and just battle away for it. In this case, it's going to be a sweek and coming up with it. They're going to try and even things up before the end of the period. Kieran Costello handed it off, heads to the bench. Nice feed underneath, hard twister. But that one's turned aside by Woods. Being tracked down by Kane Kettle. Oh, outlet pass for the Timberman hand turned over, but then Hosweekin takes a shot right away. They call it back in. That was Sam Trumbull standing in the crease, reaching outside to grab the ball, and that will be a possession foul. Costly one is there's 27 seconds left. Hosweekin, they could pull the goalie and go for the extra attacker. So far, they're waiting. Still 21 seconds to go. 
So you say five on five. Mouse Henry, the coach for Oswegan, looked over at his goaltender, Sam Forbes. Didn't call, and now as Peterborough gets possession, Joe Sullivan, the head coach for the Timberman, will take a timeout and try and set something up with 12.5 seconds to go here in the first. Welcome back, lacrosse friends. Two to one, Timberman, as we kick things off for the second quarter. Oswegan immediately comes away with the possession. Racing in is Kieran Costello, but he is stripped. Caleb Bingley having a little trouble corralling the ball, does get it. Reverses direction. Nice job to get away from trouble and passes it ahead. That one's a bit much for Schultzke. Still battling, and just Nakamura who comes up with it. Hands it off. Nakamura has to adjust his gear as he got a whack in the glove. He's cutting to the middle. Schultzke, Nakamura up for an offensive shift. Nakamura trying to fight through Costello. That pass doesn't go anywhere. It's grabbed by Corkery. He's just trying to stay out of the crease. And Asweekin comes back the other way. Kritkowski slows it down, waits for his cohort on offense. Renault throws on the brakes, tosses it behind the net to Kane Kettle. Houghton Lowe's watching him. Casey Swamp with the big hit. Asweekin trying to swim move over the top. That was. Kent Baker print up and Swamp was having none of it. Boy, he lays the body on sometimes. Just flatten Baker print up and he is getting some big taps on the back of the helmet as he gets back to the Peterborough bench. Where Joe Sullivan is joined by assistant coaches Derek Croak and Jason Tasse. Riley Curtis spinning, tried to find Goddard, it's picked off. Krakowski on the run. Behind the back pass actually goes off the head of Ryan Patterson. Oh, sweet. And Peterborough's coming the other way. Down he just misses. He went through the crease, can't play it. Can't take the pass. Shouldn't be able to. Gets it. Maybe he didn't touch the crease. Timmerman on the offense. 22 seconds left on their 30. A little duck underneath. A pass to Gasparetti out for an offensive shift. Gets away from him and up out of play. Play is blown down. Looking very uncomfortable is Isaac Laflamme. He'll be helped to the bench. This weekend we'll start with the ball right outside their crease in the stick of Heron Snow. And he is watched by Schultzke very closely. Full court defense. The other four Sweeping Bears are down in the offensive zone. So it's a Schultzke Snow one on one matchup. And Snow manages to run through it. Makes it over with time left on the eight second count and hands it off. Renault behind the net. Beaver was thinking about the dunk shot. Out to Snow. Tried to go back to Beaver. Gets away from him. Great body position there by the Peterborough defender. He couldn't come up with the ball though. And that's a diving dunk attempt. And I think Woods got a hold of that one. It rolled out front at any rate. And Peterborough quickly pushes it up the floor. Holden Lowe's hands it off. He'll stay in play. Lowe's one of the Trent University contingent on this club. And Bjorn Dielman playing first weekend actually a Trent student as well and player. That one gets off of the Sam Forbes, the goalie and up out of play so the Timberman Get a fresh 30. We'll try to add to their two to one lead. So we're approaching three minutes into the second. Saved by Forbes and he clamps down trying to get the loose ball. Actually Kettle coming away with that pass. It's a three on two. He'll shoot. Looked like it might have gone through Woods but it's actually just underneath him. Just got enough. Spencer Corkery rumbles up over center. Off to Hartley. Hartley raises to the net, goes sidearm shot, but that one's wide. Outlet pass from Forbes. Finds Zachary Moen. Moen protects the ball from Trumbull. Now there's pressure for coming from Parker Sands. Parker Sands and Justin Bragg, alternate captains for the Timberman, both with their young offspring here with their spouses in the uh, building today.
Parker and Larissa's child, just a couple of weeks old. Not very active at this point. And Justin Bragg and his partner, their, their child, just, just about three months, no, six months. Uh, he just told me before the game. Gasparini tried to track down that outlet pass, but it winds up off the boards and to Forbes, who hands it off to Heron Snow. Snow steps over center. Renault works off a pick. Patterson on him. Shoots from the far off side and scores. Lefty going to the righty shooter spot and just bounces one past Ethan Woods. Much to the dismay and displeasure of the crowd here in Millbrook. We are tied 2-2. Four minutes and 18 seconds into the second quarter. Nakamura and D'Amico once again. Bragg has it looking forward, nothing really open. He eventually makes the pass ahead and Curtis is gonna slow things down and wait. Comes to Nakamura on the near side. Pick coming. And the cutter through the middle was McNutt. Nakamura still hanging on to it. Now he gives it up to Curtis. Down to 10 on the shot clock. Outside rip. Stopped by Forbes and he catches it. Schultz, he was in on the crease. Grabbed from behind and tossed to the ground by Kieran Costello. All right, that might have been, well, I'm not sure who that was in the crease. His jersey got yanked up. Couldn't quite see the number and name. Here's Kettle fighting his way through. Hands off to Renault. Nice five hole save by Woods. Parker Sands emerges from a crowd with the ball. It's a two on one with Lowe's and then the trailing Gasparetti. Shoots, that's wide. It's going to go over and back. Patterson sees a bunch of black jerseys with the purple accents. But that pass from Snow didn't connect and now it's a chance the other way. That one gets away from Bingley. He st stumbles but recovers his his balance, but then it's recovered. The ball is by Heron Snow. The Flam hands it off, or sorry, Moen hands it off. Fighting through traffic because Lucas Beaver fell to the turf, still managed to get a shot off, but it was wide of the net. Oh, but then the pass by Woods, something happened. He collided, I think, with his own player, goes straight out to Dan Kretkowski, and Kretkowski just rips home a low shot to give us week in their first lead of the game, 3-2 with 9.23 to go in the second. Nakamura comes away with it, pops up off his one knee, and nice pass back. And Schultzke with alacrity up to Trumbull. Timmerman in the offensive zone. Nakamura takes that pass, and he'll set up as a righty. Downey with it. So Nakamura staying for some shifts on O. Hard shot from the outside by McNutt. Off the leg pad, though, of Forbes. You can hear the coaches yelling, use it. Peter was going to lose it instead. Downey not called for the over and back because it was touched by Osweek and, and he did a good job waiting until he was over the center line to pick it up, but the pass still doesn't connect and it does become possession. Osweek and as Moen goes for a run. Dawit Martin left it there for Kane Kettle. He's now behind the net with Lucas Beaver. They're going hidden ball trick. Nobody's fooled. Here's Kretkowski. Peter fights through the pick. Nice job by Owen Dale to get over the top on that one. Renault checked, it pops loose. Sands will take a look around. There's nobody with him. Now Schultzke comes, and they're just yelling, let's get to the bench. Rip from Goddard, tucks it back home. The save was made by Sam Forbes. The ball just kind of sat there in the crease, and Goddard was able to reach in tuck it back home without stepping in the crease. We're all tied up 3-3 with 8.06 to go in the second. Nice follow up by Dylan Goddard. Yeah. 
Nakamura rips it out, comes all the way over to the boards. We're holding Lowe's, we'll grab hold of it. He's going for a run over the restraining line. Looks like he's gonna circle behind the net, does so. Up top to Nakamura. Timmerman still making their change as Trumbull heads off. Riley Curtis slipping in the far side. Bradshaw joining the, the throng. Here's Goddard. Back door, nice save by Forbes going right across, but the tuck on the rebound is it Forbes made the save and got onto his arm, onto his glove. He just kind of rolled off of it. And as it came off the arm, Holden Low scooped it and tucked it home to make it four to three. Peter back in front as we near the midway point. Oh, Nakamura really early on that one. That's gonna be a sweep in possession. Split second later would have been perfect, but that was just too early. And the ball is turned over the Bears into the offensive zone. We're past the midway point of the second quarter. Big collision. They're going to say loose ball foul. And that will be the officials' timeout with 7.26 to go in the second quarter. And Peterborough leading 4-3. to three. We'll be right back with Arena Lacrosse League action from Millbrook. Timberman with possession as we start the second half of the second quarter. Peterborough in the lead 4-3 to three, down into the far side. Corkery got it just in front of the Peterborough bench. Back to Downey. He's gonna let it pass actually to Curtis. Nice stop by Forbes reacting to that cut. Good job racing out of his zone by Zachary Moen. During the break, Isaac Laflamme was helped to the dressing room by Caitlin Armstrong, the trainer for the Bears. Mentioned Mouse Henry, the head coach for Oswegan, assisted by Clancy Almas and Travis Hill. Late in the shot clock, a hard rip to try and get a reset. It's going to work if they get it. They do scoop it up. D'Amico comes away with it, runs into some traffic, but fights through a pretty solid stick check by Owen Dale. They slow things down, and the Bears snow with the ball at the top. Goes behind the net. Oh, my goodness, what a play. Had to jump up to get it. That's Lucas Beaver. Super talented athletic young man. Jumped up high to catch the pass. Landed a couple of steps and just whipped a reverse a reverse whip. The backhand style over to the far top corner past Nathan, Ethan Woods. We're all tied up 4-4. Again, a Peterborough win would pro propel them to sixth place in the standings to finish as this is the last weekend of regular season play in the Arena Lacrosse League, both East and West, the BC teams finishing up this weekend as well. A win or a loss by Six Nations tomorrow in the lone game at the ILA on Sunday would result in the Timberman Timber being sixth, play the third place team. If they lose today and the, and the Snipers win tomorrow, Timberman fall to seventh to play the second place club. That's still to be determined tonight based on how Oshawa does in their game against Toronto. This is Saturday afternoon. Nice little drag play to pull it through there. And that creates a chance and a goal. Kane Kettle takes the pass. And just buries it. Little bouncer, all the hard work done by Kent Baker Printup to fight through, get the ball back. And then tosses it up and just a lovely little bouncer. And the Bears back in front, five to four. 5.48 to go in the second. Another extended faceoff battle. So 720 degrees of rotation by these faceoff guys and eventually it pops out and Bingley gets it going back towards his own net. Changes possession, hands it, direction, and hands it off to Schultzke. Schultzke bounces one through. McNutt, low bouncer. That's stopped, no problem by Forbes. Stayed in play, but it goes to the Bears. Good job protecting there by Lucas Beaver, the recent goal scorer. Kritkowski slows it down, shovels it over to Renault. They go strong right, so they're going to rotate as they did have Renault up at the top. 
Now Krakowski takes that spot. Woods had to look around, but the ball was in his gear. Under five to play here in the half. As Trumbull gets to center, hands it off to Holden Lowe's. He's looking for somebody from the bench before he goes for a change. Left it there for Downey. Nick Nakamura, the late man off the bench, trying to sneak in. Now they're trying to get it to him back door. It's a little bit high for him. And the Bears will come back into the offensive zone. Krakowski takes his time. Gets met near center by Gasparetti. Baker print up. Go back to Snow by the far boards. Big pick and the rip outside. Nice job there by Heron Snow to take advantage of his opportunity. Blast it around the defender. And a Sweekin starting to create a little bit of a lead. Their first multi-goal lead is they're up 6-4. to four. 4.13 to play in the half. Nakamura looked like he had the edge there, but great effort by D'Amico to kind of get his stick hovering over the ball. So when Nakamura tried to pull it out, it just didn't come. And here's Kane Kettle with possession after the face-off win by the Bears. Martin spun off that check. Krikowski had a defender all up on top of him, holding Lowe's. Now Lowe's has it. He's got a man ahead. He wanted a holding or hooking call, but... Aggressive four check causes the turnover. Renault trying to find a lane. That one's deflected, but it still gets through. Behind the back goal, nice finish there by Bjorn Dielman. Dielman under pressure, no lane in front of him, so he goes behind the back, bounces one past Ethan Woods, and it's seven to four with 3.30 to go. The Bears have pulled ahead. Oh, Nakamura with a beauty, beauty win to himself there. He'll lob it back to Bingley. And just like that, the Timberman into the offensive set. Riley Curtis waiting for some help. Rolls around the top, goes down low. McNutt had his stick absolutely gobbled up. But the ball did get through to a team, Timberman teammate who got the shot off. That one stopped. And Beaver will come up over center. Krakowski taking his time. Sands is up on him. Nice two-man, three-man game by the Timberman to not allow the roll to be effective. The rebound pickup, though, by Beaver is a beauty. Goes hard twister after the shot by Eddie Renault. Stopped by Woods. Nobody harassing Beaver as he's just perched on front of the crease. Caught the ball and tucked it home. It's an eight to four lead. Just like that, the Demon, the Bears, are doubling up the Peterborough Timberman. Both these teams coming into the game on losing streaks. The Bears have lost 10 in a row to drop to 2-11. Again, a 2-1 and one start. But they are really struggling. They're the lowest scoring team in the league with 153 goals, 4 coming into this game. And against, they've given up 191 goals, which is 7th in the league. So well down in both instances. Schultz trying to just outrun the coverage of Costello. Goes down. No call as he was just... Look almost like the letting go of the pressure. Opened it up and Schulski just toppled to the turf. He popped up. Timberman still with 16 seconds to shoot. That one by Goddard will reset it and it's grabbed there. Fred Hartley diving, reverse shot. They're gonna say crease violation. The other end, another turnover and here comes Peterborough Bingley with it. They come out to get him now. He'll spin back and pass it off to Gasparetti. That was mowing all over him. Big hit by Bingley. Kind of a delayed call on the penalty and Bingley can't believe it. Coach Jason Tasse can't believe it. I'm a little surprised myself to be honest. Just looked like a solid cross check. 
with an eight to four lead and 158 to go in the half. The Bears are going to the power play to try and extend this. They go strong right with Krakowski at the top. Heron Snow quickly back down to the corner. There's a rip from the stick of Eddie Renault, but the Timberman come up with the rebound. Outlet pass to Sands. He's pushing the pace over to Gasparetti. He's going to slow it down as they're two on four. Sands is going for a change. Now Gaspo will as well. Riley Curtis with the hard shot. It was wide. The rebound trying to be tucked back in, but went to the Timberman. Bradshaw trying to get something home. And it's going to be a sweeping ball on the violation for Crumbs D'Amico. Perimeter work on this power play. 105 left to go in the penalty to Bingley. Renault to the cutter. Nice chance. But it's stopped by Ethan Woods turning aside. This week in player. And with 49 seconds left, 51 in the power play. Mouse Henry decides he wants to chat it over. We're going to have a timeout. We'll come back for the final less than one minute of the first half. This is Arena Lacrosse League Action on JVI Sports Network. 49.9 seconds left. This week on the power play lead, 8 to 4. Trying to extend that edge. Krakowski at the top, gets it across. Renault shopping far side, here's Heron Snow. Behind the net is Krakowski, tries to dunk, it's no good, he lands in the crease after Woods had made the save. Outlet pass, Sands has it. He's got Bragg coming, gets the pass through. Oh no he doesn't, it got away. And now, we're gonna have an interference call on a sweep and Woods was coming to the bench and I think they might have interfered with one of the players coming to try and change for Peterborough. So the power play for a sweep and would have gone to the end of the half. This is 25.6 left in this second quarter, 26 on the sweep and power play, but two going up for that call. Interference along by the benches and the Timberman will start five on four as Woods was already over at the bench. They're going to wait 18 to go. They'll wait another dozen seconds or 10 seconds or so. Curtis gets the skip pass. Sidearm. It's a hard rip by Downey, but well off the target. They tried to get it Downey again. Couldn't catch it. Peter has possession. The shot just a bit late. It stopped anyway. And through the first half, the score is eight to four in favor of the Asweekin Bears over the Peterborough Timberman. I'm Stephen Stamp. This is JVI Sports Network presentation of Arena Lacrosse League Action. We'll be back with the second half. We're back underway with the third quarter here from Millbrook Arena. I'm Stephen Stamp. This is Arena Lacrosse League Action on JBI Sports Network. And the Timbermen go to the power play, hoping to start to chip away at this eight to four deficit. They were, were leading for much of the first quarter, but Sweekin really taking control. Back door, and that's a nice finish. Frederick Hartley takes a diagonal pass and just tucks it home. 22 seconds into the third quarter. Peterborough is on the board for the half. Nakamura and D'Amico again. Nakamura in the Orange and blue of Peterborough. D'Amico wearing a sweek and black with purple trim. Schultzke races up to get it. Bit of a twister pass around the defender. Pretty fancy little play to get it over to Jacob Gasparetti. Now the offense comes out. Spencer Corkery starting with it. Fifth forward coming is McNutt High. Started to circle back as it looked like the Timberman might lose the ball. So a rip from the outside by Downey. Forbes makes the save and then the ball 
drops beside him, but he'd stepped away from the net and it goes harmlessly into the crease. Here comes Kretkowski. Krakowski gets it back at the top. It's an American player coming up. A number of Americans in the Arena Lacrosse League this year. Aaron Snow hits the cutting Kane Kendall far side. Nice stop by Woods. They're going to call it a back in. And this weekend will get possession again. Krakowski at the top. Renault comes off a pick, thought about the shot, but nice hustle by Sands to get out on him. Now Sands tried to get the ball off the backboards. Got away from him, is headed to himself by Holden Lowe's, who pings it off the far post. Lowe's had the ball bobble, used the front of his helmet to just tap it back up to his stick. Got a nice shot off, but couldn't beat the iron. Riley Curtis waiting for his cohort to join him. A little slip pick from Hartley. They go far side, Downey. Finds Curtis, he's got a good lane. The shot, another stop by Forbes. Forbes out of the Allura Mohawks chain. There's Frederick Hartley, throws it behind the net. Curtis gets the ball back immediately over to Hartley. Pick from Goddard, he shoots and scores, Hartley! What a rip from downtown. Timberman, the first two goals of the second half in the first two minutes and 16 seconds. It's eight to six for us weekend. Nakamura taps that one free of the center cir circle there, but it's scooped up by Baker print up and the Bears go into the offense. Renault hits Beaver behind the back. That pass doesn't connect, but it does come all the way out to Snow at the top. He can't come up with it. Schultzke looked ahead, wisely makes the short pass to Gasparetti, and that gets away from Gasparetti. The Timberman just having trouble connecting on their passes. It's gonna be Zachary Moen, one of the call-ups, another Isaac Laflamme, as mentioned, left earlier. Looks like he's got uh, some issues with his knee. He has left to go to the hospital and get checked out. His father's here with him and has taken him over to the ER. Renault backpedaling, hands it off to Snow well high. Gasparetti out on him. The pass doesn't get through or doesn't connect. It goes all the way through to Ethan Woods. He's been having some adventures trying to pass the ball, so he just actually handed it to a defender and the Timberman get it back up over center. Here's McNutt. Hartley at the top, hands it off, and the three lefties for Peterborough all slipping into the middle. Big congestion, and that, I think, hit Corkery out front. Grabbed by Forbes. Oh, he has trouble now as his pass is picked off by Hartley, and the Timberman back to the attack. Bingley starts to join the O, started to go back, continued to join, a little stop and start, and he is waiting. The late cutter is McNutt. It looks like they're trying to find him, but Downey unable to get it to him. Or sorry, that's Bradshaw, and he'll just let that one rip. That's going to turn into a chance the other way, except it's bobbled a bit by Moen. He does come away with it. Good wheels to get up over center. He's got Tomiko with him. Kane Kettle coming to the far side. Oh, he had a backdoor pass to Kettle. Moen decides to take the shot instead. That's turned aside by Woods. I think if he had that to do again, probably would be looking to make that pass to Kettle. Cutting Goddard can't catch that pass, and the bouncer is too high for Nakamura. And here come the Bears. Peterborough hadn't even completed their change, so they just send a defender at the back door. Oh, or no. Drilled. Kent Baker print up, and you could hear his moan from here as he got hit in the back. He is not very happy as he gets over to the bench. Peterborough gets an illegal substitution penalty. There's a little confusion going on, and they had one player come out each end of the bench. That's just too many. Nakamura will go and serve it. And Oswekin will try and get there first of the second half. They lead 8-6. to six. 
We are approaching the five minute into the third quarter mark. Heron Snow at the righty shooter spot. He's got Krakowski at the top, he goes to now. There's Renault. Roll it, that's back to Snow at the top, didn't quite connect. He gets a pick from Dawit Martin and shoots around the defender. That one's stopped by Woods. It'll be picked up by Schultzke, who bounces one up to Trumbull near center. Nathan Schultzke, all kinds of energy. Just an energizer bunny of a player and starting to start to get, you know, get the nuances of this box game. He's worked hard at it. Hartley driving in the net, looking for the hat trick. That bounces wide and up out of play. Didn't touch anybody on this weekend, so it will be Bears ball. Here comes Heron Snow. A distinctive yellow hat on Snow's stick. Now Krakowski has the red bottom half, white top half to his head. Up top to Krakowski. Just under a minute on the power play. It's going to be a fresh 30 for the Bears after that one went off of Ethan Woods. And Beaver will just top it up, toss it up top where Baker Printup is quarterbacking now. Krakowski at the shooter spot. He's going to try and set a pick. Baker Printup didn't wait for it. He got the shot off. but Actually didn't get through to the goalie. and went off defender. So no fresh 30, but they don't need it as Baker Printup takes that pass from Krakowski. Goes low to high. Sneaks it past the arm of Ethan Woods, and it's nine to six. Power play goal for the Bears. They extend their lead back to three. 8.49 to go here in the third quarter. Official gets back to the floor after communicating the scoring information to the scorer's box. And we're underway. Again, a pitched battle, but this one comes off fairly quickly as Wheaton comes away with it in snow. Back to the offensive zone. Lucas Beaver thought about going to the net. Pulls it back and waits for the offense to get out. Baker Printup directed his man out to the boards. And that shot taken by that man. That was Bjorn Dielman after taking that pass. Ripped one, it gets away. Out of bounds, it was off of Woods. And then Beaver goes into the crease. He's being dragged back out by Bingley. No penalties. And Bingley will take, oh no, who's got the ball? Starting up the floor with Nathan Schultzke. He just skedaddled along the boards once play was blown in. I swear he was running before the whistle even went. Peter Rose sets up in the offense with just 10 to shoot as Dylan Goddard to pick from Corkery. McNutt trying to open some space. They go to the far side and Bradshaw goes behind the net. I thought he'd made a pass. He still got the ball. He's going to just run out of time. He wasn't able to find anyone to pass to and here come the Bears. Moen under some heavy pressure. That's going to be an over and back. Great job by Holden Lowe's. Gasparetti picks it up. He's got Lowe's with him. He's going to shoot. Forbes looks behind him. It is underneath the big goalie. And we head back the other way. Back and forth action. Still 9-6 for the Bears. As they step into the offensive zone. That short pass connects with Snow. Now there's a penalty coming. Bingley having some words with Eddie Renault. As Renault is going to the box after a hard pick on Bingley is drawing a penalty for him. I believe it's an illegal cross check. Bingley Renault having some words all the way on Renault's trip to the penalty box. Tim Merman to the power play. Riley Curtis starts with it. He's going to quarterback at the top in this lefty strong set. 
Behind the back, Goddard, hard rip, but Forbes all over with the shoulder pad. It's gonna roll out to Curtis. Pressure from Kritkowski who's all over the floor today, as is Heron Snow. He's the other bear at the top of the penalty kill formation. Goddard, low shot, swallowed up by Forbes. Boy, Sam Forbes is having quite a game today. Very solid. Nice run out of the zone by Kira Costello and Bragg just rams him into the boards. Good clean shoulder hit. And that's gonna turn the ball over. Here comes Curtis, it's three on four. So the Timberwolves are gonna wait. No, they're not. Now there's a penalty coming. After that pass was knocked away, Dylan Goddard got absolutely flattened from behind. It's gonna be DeWitt Martin going for Two minutes or less for check from behind. And it's a five on three advantage for the Timberman. Gasparetti's gonna be up top as the safety outlet, safety valve in the circle near center, the faceoff circle. He'll toss it in and Curtis gets to Goddard, gets it back. The righty's on the far side, of course. Downey up top and then Bradshaw. So it's Bradshaw up top and Downey's down low at this point. Curtis tracks that one down. 15 on the shot clock. Hard rip by Bradshaw. Rebound straight out to Downey. Kritkowski almost had it. He is there. Chops down on it, but the ball bounces. I think it was actually swatted away. Nice heads up play by Downey. And the Timberman, fresh possession. Still 40 on the five on three advantage. Oh, last second backdoor pass. Didn't connect, it was a bit high for Goddard. The Bears trying to get out of their end. Costello runs through a check. He's just going to lob it, basically icing the ball to get a change and get some fresh legs out there. Snow, Kritkowski, two of the defenders. Trying to see who just came on. Curtis faked the shot, comes back. A hard one there from Downey. Behind the back, another one. That's going to count. And finally, the Timberman keep moving the ball, keep passing it around. And Dylan Goddard on the back door quick stick, tucks it home, and they get it before the first penalty expires. So the Timberman pull within 9-7 with 5.34 to go in the third, and they've got 56 seconds left on the power play. This is the Dowett Martin test um, check from behind call that they're on now. Justin Bragg makes a pass across. Schultzke waves him off and will hand it to Curtis. Peterborough goes back to the power play. They've only got two guys out there right now. They're gradually getting the O on there. Power play set, but they've only got 15 seconds to shoot. That pass was tipped away. Nice job by Baker. Print up to get a stick in the lane. Lost his stick on the check, gets it back. Sam Forbes looking for an outlet. Baker print up. He's just gonna fling it down the floor as they were running at a time on the eight second count and had nobody in the offensive zone as they killed this penalty. They are in the net on their end of the floor or the benches on their end. So nobody easing it up and Riley Curtis makes them pay a power play goal. It's a sidearm rip from the top of the formation. Seven seconds to go in the penalty and Peterborough is back within one, it's nine eight. 4.45 to go here in the third. Nakamura and D'Amico once again. Oh, Nakamura won that clamp easily, but it actually pops out to Kane Kettle. The Bears have possession, that's stripped. Schultzke loses it now on a nice four check by Eddie Renault. Schultzke hustles back, comes away with it. Had a look, he had Gasparri ahead. Fights through the double team over and takes the shot. He had Gasparri with him, but that was a great scoring chance for Schultzke. Trying to tie things up. Long outlet pass from Forbes, and now it's Forbes having a little trouble connecting on his transition passes. Bragg will slow it down and stay for the offensive set, as will Nakamura coming off the board, off the bench. There are four lefties. That's Bradshaw and Downey both taking a break on this possession. 
It'll be a reset, but the Bears come away with it. A little spin move and the big hit from Bragg. That's going to cause a turnover. Oh, nice stop. Dangerous chance for Gasparetti. Forbes equal to the task. Penalty coming. Swinging trail check. They're going to call a slash. You can see the immediate re response by Kritkowski. He took that one in the leg. And the Timmerman, after their power play, will be going to the penalty kill. It's going to be a slashing call. Two minutes or less. And Gasparini's already in the penalty box. No argument coming. So with a 9-8 lead, one goal up, 3.26 to go in the third. Krikowski's going to start at the top. It's a strong right set up. Baker print up at the shooter spot. They've got Heron Snow down on the crease. And this is Eddie Renault. Beaver the other lefty. Behind the back down. Low hard shot. Underhand from Krikowski. He's still looking a little uncomfortable. In the lower back or in the glute area. 20 on the shot clock. After the reset, Krakowski to Renault, hard shot, comes off of Woods and Beaver gets it back. Lucas Beaver has had some tremendously successful games in this league. He gets that pass there. Shot, the pass bounces up high, still loose. Casey Swamp comes away with it. Hard forecheck from Baker Printup. And Peterborough wants a slashing call, and they have a pretty good point because that was solid contact. Definitely very loud because it was on the plastic. But you can hear the head coach Joe Sullivan saying, how is that any different? Well, for one, it was a two-hander instead of the swinging one-hander. Both were solid contact, though. Goddard has it behind the net, 40 on the, shot, on the penalty. Curtis just running out of time on the 30. He was looking for someone to pass to. We're down to two minutes in the third quarter. 9-8, Oswekin Bears. And they're on the power play. Another 28 seconds to go on this man advantage. They're going to take their time and set things up. Krikowski, they go strong right again. Same group on the power play. There's Renault. Steps in. Nobody near him as all the defense was shifted around to the righties and up and down on the rest of the Bears spreading out in the zone. And Renault had nothing but space to bury that low sidearm sweeper into the far corner. 10 8, 144 to go in the third. This weekend's power play marker gives them another 10 or two goal lead. The ball was loose. They were both trying to battle for it, trying to knock each other's sticks out of the way. Oswekin comes away with it. Great little cut by Beaver with Schultzke bearing down on him. Lucas Beaver trying to fight through the double team. That is not going to work. The ball is, oh, it is. Beaver comes away with it. Reverse a little backhand as he drove to the net, ran into Justin Bragg, got the shot off. What an effort by Lucas Beaver. Ultimately turned aside, though, by Ethan Woods. 20 on the shot clock for the Bears. Kane Kettle, big swat from Lowe's. Pick coming from Eddie Renault. Probably lucky he missed it because he was definitely moving. Gets down to Kettle, whose pass, whose shot is blocked, and Woods will go for the short pass. It has not been his day passing wise, so he is going for safety over trying to push anything at this point. Ball's too high for a couple of players, one on either team to get off the boards, but it eventually comes to Heron Snow on the ground. D'Amico had a little trouble, has it now though. Renault comes back to Heron Snow, immediately gets across to Lucas Beaver. He's kind of can open her down by Parker Sands. Dawit Martin trying to fight through and get that against four Timberman jerseys. And the 30 will expire. Heads up play by Owen Dale. He's just Swats the ball over into the far corner along the cor along the turf. Timberman with six seconds to work. Hartley, huge pick, way over the line by Colton McNutt. 
And that is gonna hit some of the, that may have actually ripped part of the ceiling off. That'll do it for three quarters of play. It is 10-8 for the Oswegum Bears over the Peterborough Timberman. Make sure you come back and join us for the final 15 minutes of Arena Lacrosse League action on JVI Sports Network. Fourth quarter underway, Arena Lacrosse League action here at the Millbrook Arena. I'm Steven Stamp with ALL Action on JVI Sports Net Network. It's 10 to eight for the Sweekum Bears and they will gain possession eventually of the first draw of the fourth quarter. Heron Snow at the top, immediately back to Kane Kettle. Coming around the corner, Lucas Beaver on the run. Gets a step on Schultz, he spins and fires it just inside the near post. Nice job, got Woods moving to his right a bit and brought it back to the near side. It's a lovely finish by Lucas Beaver. Again, this weekend is locked in at number eight. They will play Whitby next week in the quarterfinals. Peterborough, they can come back and get a win here. They will get sixth. Or if Six Nations snipers lose tomorrow in the final game of the season, that would also result in Peterborough coming six. Here's Gaspar Reddy, beautiful finish. Nice pass across from Riley Curtis off the draw. And Gaspar Reddy, goal number 27 of the year for him. Gaspar Reddy so dangerous with his speed and really nice hands. We're back to the faceoff dot just seconds after Nakamura and D'Amico had battled. It's 11-9 now. Two goals in 39 seconds to open the quarter. Nakamura pulls that one out to Gasparetti. He's driving in the night again. He'll shoot again. Oh, <laughs> Forbes made the save, but actually bounced off his teammate and almost headed back in. It was a bit of a tr problem for him. The other pass is thrown away. Woods will get it, and the Timberman back forward as Holden Low steps across center. Peterborough with possession once again. Hard rip from the outside, McNutt. That's gonna be an over and back and a sweep and we'll get the ball. Kritkowski takes it to the top as the fifth attacker getting out for the Bears. They come back to the near boards and Eddie Renault gets a pick but just runs past it. Schultz, he's training with him. Good recovery. Renault does get a shot off under some defensive duress. The save by Woods as we can get to back for a fresh 30. Kettle runs out of trouble up to Beaver and immediately back to Kettle. Oh, they had Beaver. He was open. He wanted that ball and they just missed him. He was naked on the crease and they just couldn't get it to him. That pass, I believe it was a pass from Dealman. Hits the defender from Peterborough and flies up out into the corrugated tin around the building. Kritkowski goes behind the net. Beaver singing dunk. He's got it. Yeah, he was looking to his forehand side. Convinced Woods that's where he might go. And then quickly changed course. Dove around the other way and tucked it home. Lovely goal, Lucas Beaver. And it's 12 to nine. Every time Peterborough trying to make a push back, a sweep and wither response. Nakamura and D'Amico at the dot. It's actually kind of an anti-dot because it's the white line for center. And there's just a blue cleared spot where the faceoffs are done. A sweep and shorter man. Look at Moen out there. Here's Curtis. Two minutes gone in the fourth quarter. 12 9 Bears. Goddard feeds it through to Curtis. Who's covered pretty well, but steps back and creates a shooting lane for himself. Corkery trying to rake in and get the ball away from Kent Baker Printup in the crease, but Baker Printup gets it out. And here's Beaver in the offensive zone. Being challenged there by Owen Dale. Pass Beaver off as Beaver goes in behind the net. It's a shot from the outside by Snow. They've got seven to shoot. Beaver behind the net again. 
Gonna try and dunk over the top this time, and it's a goal again. Lucas Beaver. Yeah. <laughs> Far post dunk, over the top, crossbar dunk. He's just gotta go to the other side, and he'll have the full triumvirate. 13-9. Bears pull ahead, 12-15 to go in the fourth. Nakamura pulls it out to himself, collides with Kane Kettle, but manages to get the ball back, and Trumbull will rumble up over a center. Some heavy forecheck pressure from Anthony D'Amico, but Trumbull does a nice job getting into the offensive zone. Nakamura's shot was blocked. Gets up out of play, it'll be a fresh 30s. That went off of Kane Kettle. Kettle now jumps out to cover Downey. Active, active game for Kane Kettle all over the floor. Hartley spins, shoots, that one's off a defender, I believe. Yep, they'll say it went off of Sweekin. So as it gets out of play, it'll be a fresh 30 for the Timberman. Little sidearm sweeping bouncer by Nakamura, went through the crease to pick up his rebound and has to turn it over. Puts it down there for Kritkowski, lobs it ahead to Kane Kettle. Kettle watched high by Bingley and that Pass affected a bit by Bingley's check, but it did get through to Beaver, who tries to tuck one home, fought through the check and got up on top of the crease, but just got away from him as Woods made the stop. Here's Beaver again. He's feeling it. Little pick from Renault. Shovels it to Renault, that's too far. Takes it off the boards with Bingley all over him. Ooh, Beaver runs himself into the boards and the Timmermans score. I got him out. I was watching to make sure Lucas Beaver was okay after he tried to throw that check. Wound up launching himself loudly into the boards. And Oswekin buries it. So that's Eddie Renault with the goal. Beaver actually gets the assist. As before he came to set that hard pick that turned into a self-check into the boards, he had handed the ball to Renault and Renault just walked out and ripped one home. 14 to nine, the Bears pull ahead, 11.04 to go in the fourth. D'Amico pops it out, goes after it. Curtis was there, it's gonna come out to Dawit Martin who spins. Great check by Riley Curtis, trail check. Came around the Oswegan player, smacked the stick and that sent it up into the Raptors. Didn't touch a Peterborough player, it went straight out of the Bears stick. And Peterborough gets a nice cause turnover there by Riley Curtis. Goddard's shot from the outside is stopped. We've got a man up the floor. As Dawit Martin had raced ahead. Good job by Dylan Goddard to go back. He can play D, I remember him and actually Jesse Guerin both working on their, on their defensive skills back in the day in the Sealax, the predecessor to this league. Both became quite good transition players. Goddard so dangerous when he would get on the run with his skill set. Same with Guerin. Here's Gaspar Reddy, fights for a couple of checks, he's behind the net. Out front to Bradshaw who's stopped. Penalty coming though. Oh no, it's just a crease violation. Maybe a penalty if they keep jousting, but eventually the two players back near those sweep and bench clear from each other, Heron Snow into the offensive zone. Less than 10 to play in the fourth. Well, Sweekin with a 14 to nine lead. Woods corrals that one coming off the backboards. Not liking his options down the floor, so he'll just leave it short for Schultzke, who just makes it over the line before the eight second count. Curtis, little pick from Corker, and ducks underneath. Good two man defense. Oh, but the rip from McNutt from high, as he comes in, late man off the bench, takes that pass and skips a bouncer off the turf. By the far side of Sam Forbes. Peterborough within four, it's 9.24 to go, 14-10 as Sweekin leads. <laughs> 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 
extended battle for this one. Eventually, it's Bragg coming away with it. Fights for a check and gets it to Trumbull. Nakamura sets a pick. Trumbull runs around it, gets the shot off, but he missed everything except the ceiling. And it's a sweep in possession going back up the other way. Great four check pressure there by Trumbull. Gets it free from Krikowski. Then Lowe's pushed his man, Kieran Costello, over center, but he stayed in the air, got the ball thrown ahead, didn't touch down the backcourt, just avoided the over and back. Long outside shot stopped by Woods, bounces up nicely for Trumbull. He's gonna run up into the offensive zone. Kettle on him. Well, that pass gets away from Lowe's, who then winds up running over in a sweeping player. And Peterborough will get possession. I'm not entirely sure what the call was, but the Timberman will get it back. Eight and a half to go in the fourth. They trail by four. Here's Downey cradling, cradling far side to McNutt, who scored that last big ripper for Peterborough. This time it's Riley Curtis. That one stopped. Curtis is going to get his own rebound. Thought about the dunk, but Heron Snow all over him. Has to go up top to Downey, who goes around to Corkery on the far side. That one's wide. They'll be an over and back. Chance for Krikowski as he takes off. And it's going to be an over and back. And they'll have to restart as the ball was getting right on top of the crease. Can't start with possession there. So Krakowski had to go into the corner. King Kettle to Snow quickly on. Renault back to Snow. They're just completing their change. Krakowski is gassed. Very reasonably so. Snow back to our attempt. Kettle couldn't quite find the handle. It's loose in front of the Peterborough net. Trumbull tries to get it. It's tapped there by Breaker Printup. Eventually it's Bingley getting it. He runs through the check from Kettle. And he's pushing the pace up into the offensive zone. He'll hit the second man. No, nope. thought he was going to hit the second man off the bench, which was Hartley. He'll just leave it for Schultzke instead. Schultzke comes, dive scores. Nathan Schultzke. I saw one of those earlier in the year from him, but it was called off. Not sure how many goals he's got this year. I don't think it's a ton, but that is a beauty. Ducks through traffic, dives to the far side, and tucks it up into the far top corner. Peter are back within three, 7.14 to go. We'll have the officials time out at the next non-goal stoppage. Oh, Nakamura all over the clamp again, but it's grabbed there by Lucas Beaver. He'll come up to the top to Costello. Costello's heading for a change after giving it to Snow. Fifth attacker out, 15 seconds to shoot for the Bears. Ed Renault, watched like a hawk by Owen Dale. That shot well off the mark, heads off the backboards into the back of the mesh of Ethan Woods' net, and he gets it ahead to Owen Dale. Downey off the bench, but Eventually it's just turned over and here comes Zachary Moan again, leaves it there for Beaver. Fakes the pass to the far side, just trying to confuse his defender. Gets through to Kettle. They're gonna let the righties have another go with it. Krakowski tried the Jumping tuck shot from behind the crease. Looked like he may have been behind the goal line. His stick may have been, so it wouldn't have counted anyway if it had gone in, as far as I could tell from here. Timmerman down by three, just over under six to go. McNutt thought about the shot, makes a nice pass through instead. That was a dangerous chance for Frederick Hartley. Shovel pass ahead, they did not make the eight count. So we're gonna have the officials time out with 5.39 to go in the fourth quarter. It's 14-11 for the Bears, and the Timberman will have possession when we return to ALL action on JVI Sports Network. Power play for the Bears. Strong right with Krikowski at the top. This is Renault shopping. Hands it down to Beaver. Quick pass on top of the crease, but nice positioning by Justin Bragg on D. 
takes it away. Gasparetti trying to get there first. Oh, that's going to be a penalty. And just a silly one by Gasparetti. As Forbes had caught the ball, clearly in his stick, clearly standing in the crease. And Gasparetti just drops the stick onto the stick of the goaltenders. No question. Not egregious, but an obvious penalty by Gasparetti. And that's going to nullify the Peterborough power, or actually make it a five on three, sorry, for the Bears, as Nakamura is already in there. Wow, that's one where you just, as soon as you do it, you're thinking, why did I do that? Probably as you're doing it. So Sweekin with 5.08 to go. Discussion amongst the officials after the horn was buzzed by the scorekeeper's booth. Parker Sands, Casey Swamp, and Justin Bragg are the three defenders out there for Peterborough, but I'm not sure what's, I think they're doing a penalty shot. Why would that be a penalty shot? I don't Unfortunately, we're having some issues with the mic in the PA booth today, so we can't really get the announcement, but they're definitely clearing the floor. And yeah, it, I think it's a penalty shot. Actually, there's just a lot of standing around right now. There must have been, must have been two penalties. I don't. Yeah, it is a penalty shot, so. It should be the first penalty, the 129 left wiped out and then two more put up on the board. Either way, here comes Lucas Beaver, mano a mano with Ethan Woods and Woods holds his ground, makes the stop. I think Beaver would like a re redo on that one. And they do wipe out the 139 penalty. So it will become a stay of five on three for a full two minutes. And again, we can't get the announcement of what the penalties were, so I don't know what the second call was. We'll have a face-off. Justin Bragg will take it for the Timberman. Lowe's and Sands now, the other defenders out with him. Bragg pulls it out to himself and gets the face-off win. That's huge for the Timberman to be able to kill some time with Nakamura, their face-off guy, in the penalty box. He is the in-home. <laughs> Holding Lowe's up around the top. Snow and Krikowski watching him. The hit comes, but Lowe's really delivers the blow on Beaver, but then that pass shoveled wide of its intended target and will be Beaver picking it up. He just missed on the penalty shot. He's gonna slow things down. They'll set up with Heron Snow up as the safety outlet at the top. Now they're gonna hand it to Snow. As they complete their change to 16 on the shot clock. Now 14 as they start to actually go. Snow takes it back at the top. It's an odd five on three. Renault. Down low, no loose ball push called on Lowe's. The 30 expires anyway, and it's not a great offensive shift on the five on three power play for the Bears who lead 14-11 with four minutes to go, 52 seconds left on the two minor penalties. Curtis tries to cut to the back door. They made a pass, didn't quite connect. Dylan Goddard with the double team. Lowe's gets to the bench to get a new defender out. Heads up play by Peterborough to be careful of not having someone go from each end of the bench. As Sands from one end and Downey at the other were both starting to head out and they communicated quite well. Because an, I'll tell you, another illegal substitution would have meant another penalty shot. Now Goddard just battling along the boards to try and keep the ball loose on the floor for as long as he can. They're gonna call withholding on a Sweekin. The Timberman will get it. There's 14 seconds left on their five on three disadvantage. They can kill these final now nine, eight seconds. And then they'll have just over three minutes 
to work on cutting into this three goal deficit. They trail 14-11. Players are released from the penalty box and they score. I don't know if that pass just drifted in or if it was actually caught in front. A lot of traffic out front. Well, it's close with 3.03 to go. Back to even strength. 14-12, the Timberman within two. Again, a win would make sure they have sixth place in the arena lacrosse league. All eight teams do make the playoffs, but who you play depends on your seating. Oswegum will be eighth. They'll play at Whippy for the first place. Steelhawks, a dominant club this year in the arena lacrosse league. Not really full of stars, just a lot of really good players for Whippy. Here's Downey over to the far side to Curtis. They keep it moving. Looking to start collecting some goals. Hartley was checked before he could get his follow through. Well, Sweeten came away with it. They're gonna push the pace. Not sure that was necessary. Heron Snow is down the floor, fighting with Hartley for possession. Snow now gets two hands on the stick. It's down by their feet. This is great for a Sweeten to have the clock just keep ticking. It's down to 10 seconds since they did have possession. Lob pass, caught nicely by Kurtkowski. Bingley all over him, some solid wax from the stick and the 30 will expire. Beaver puts it down with 207 to go. Sands ahead to Bingley as the Timberman come back into the offensive zone. Curtis, hard shot, that one's wide. Gets up and hits the ceiling and the Bears will have it. Well, you don't want to retract the claws completely, but the Sweeten needs to keep this clock moving. And timeout taken by the Bears. Mouse Henry saw that Heron Snow was getting surrounded, wanted to take a bit of a break. We'll do the same, 1.49 to go. It's 14.12 this week and we'll be right back. With the ball and 109 seconds still on the clock. A two goal lead for a Sweeten. Daniel Krikowski watched by Schultze again, the high pressure. Got to get after him now. That's an illegal pick. Little bit much from Heron Snow. Holden Lowe's is up the floor, but they can't find him. Goddard does hit Gasparetti, the trailer. Nice save by the trail leg of Sam Forbes. Pops straight out to Sam Dylan Goddard. And Peterborough's going to take their time out with a minute 30 to go, down 14 to 12. Seems to be a debate among some of the players and coaches. Yeah, we'll take a break. Left to play, 14-12 for a sweep and the Timberman with possession in the offensive zone and six attackers out. Goddard, Curtis, Hartley, and Corkery are the lefties. Bradshaw and Downey are the righties. Kritkowski's gonna be out, out putting some pressure on. You hear the, the sweep and Bench yelling, they don't need to wait. Be ready, they might go after it right away. Goddard, quick pass, shot from Bradshaw, goes wide. Saved by Hartley, they've got 10 to shoot. Curtis down low, Goddard spinning, shoot, save by Forbes. That'll be a fresh 30 if the Timberman can get it. It looked like they would and they do. Bradshaw has it. One minute to play. Hard shot stopped by Forbes off of the stick of Cur Riley Curtis. Curtis tracks it down. Top out of play, it's off of Oswekin. It's gonna be a fresh 30 for Peterborough, 52.2 to go. Timberman with six attackers, putting some pressure on. Gasper ready, ready to come out. As Kane Kettle gets the ball, he is double teamed into the boards, taken down, and the Timberman come away with it. Riley Curtis playing maybe the best game I've seen him play. Corkery, hard shot, stopped by Forbes. Boy, Sam Forbes has made some big saves late in this game. That one gets, the pass gets away. Kane Kettle going to try and track it down. Hartley going after him. Heron Snow going into open space, deposits it into the empty net. You can see the legs on some of the Timbermans they are trying to track back into defensive position. Just couldn't get there. Heron Snow takes the pass, tucks it home, and it's going to be, you know, Sweeken Bears victory unless 
Peterborough can pull out a miracle. It's 15-12 with 20.5 seconds to go. Ethan Woods will head back to the bench, to the net, sorry. Fully defensive face-off for the Bears as they put four guys inside their restraining line. Just leave D'Amico to kill as much time off the draw as he can, and he does a pretty nice job of it. The Bears come away with it. Heron Snow takes a look ahead, and they're just going to hang on to it. Zachary Moen with it. We'll change direction a couple of times. Final six seconds. Moen will hang on to the ball, and the Oswegum Bears win 15 to 12 in Arena Lacrosse League action from Millbrook Arena here on JVI Sports Network. I'm Stephen Samp. Thanks for being with us. We will see you next time.